When you're fasting, is it better to skip breakfast or is it better to skip dinner? We're going to talk a little bit about the physiology and I'm going to share with you some of Taria's secrets. Taria had gained a lot of weight, over 100 pounds after she had her last child. When she met her endocrinologist, he told her to read the obesity code and by following some of those principles, she was able to lose 130 pounds. She went from morbidly obese to a normal body mass index and I'm going to share with you her regimen and her best tip. Most people think that hunger is dependent on how long you've gone without eating, but this is actually not true. The amount of hunger we feel depends on the hormones in our body and these vary throughout the day in what's called the circadian rhythm. This study of a large group of people shows the average response and when people are the most hungry and the least hungry. People are the least hungry at 8 a.m. in the morning and they're most hungry at 8 p.m. in the evening. This is very interesting because the morning time you've gone 10, 12, 14 hours without eating and yet at 8 a.m. you are the least hungry that you will be all day. In the evening you probably ate just a few hours ago and yet you are the most hungry. So which hormones are important? This figure shows which hormones go up at what time of the day. During our sleep there's something that is very interesting that happens just before we wake up. We know that we're about to wake up 3 a.m., 4 a.m. and certain hormones will tend to go up. That's growth hormone, melatonin and prolactin. A bit closer to 6 a.m., 7 a.m. you get cortisol, aldosterone and some of the stress hormones and sex hormones going up. And this happens every day. So they go up just before you wake up and then they go down very low. The point of these hormones is to get our body ready for the upcoming day. These are the same hormones which are called counter-regulatory hormones. The point of these is to take some of the energy, those calories that we've stored away, and to bring them out so our body can use them. And this is the reason why we're not hungry at 8 a.m. Because our body has essentially started the process of waking up, started the process of feeding ourselves from our own body fat, and that's why we're not hungry. Is it really necessary to eat breakfast? Not really, because our body's done such a good job of that already. If you don't feel hungry in the morning, you don't have to eat because you already have the energy you need for the upcoming day. You don't have to put a couple muffins in your mouth in order to have energy for the day ahead. You can break your fast, which is breakfast, in the morning if you like, but you could break your fast at 12 o'clock or even in the evening time, or you could break your fast the next day. It simply doesn't matter because your body will find the energy that it needs. When we're trying to decide about skipping breakfast versus skipping dinner in a fast, there are several considerations. First of all, the meals are not equal. If you look at large averages, people tend to eat the least amount at breakfast, somewhere around 18-20% of their total calories if they're eating three meals a day. Whereas lunch and dinner tend to be bigger, tend to be 30-50% to of calories. If you're skipping breakfast, you're tending to skip less of a meal than you're skipping dinner. So they're not exactly equal. Even though in a 24-hour fast, going from breakfast to breakfast or dinner to dinner is the same, they're not actually identical in terms of your physiology. The other consideration that we have to have is how easy is it going to be to fit this into your schedule? Skipping breakfast is easy also because we tend not to have people that we always sit down to breakfast with. Lunch is very often the same, particularly for people who are working. If you work through lunch or you have a meeting during lunch, not that many people are going to care. But dinner is a very social meal. 
That's the meal that we often take with our family. And if we're not doing that, we'll often go out with friends. So if you're skipping dinner all the time, it can really intrude upon your lifestyle. And that's going to play a role. Skipping breakfast is usually easier, but skipping dinner is usually more effective. So let's break this down. When you're skipping breakfast, you're the least hungry that you are throughout the whole day. And skipping a meal when you're not hungry is going to be easier. And this effect is independent of what time you get up and it's also independent of what time you last ate. The second thing is that it's going to be the smallest meal so therefore easier to skip, but also makes it less effective. The third consideration is that it fits into a daily schedule very easily. The fourth thing is that it can be a very easy habit to acquire. And when you make things a habit, it makes it easier to do it day in, day out. So myself, for example, I very rarely eat breakfast. What I'll do is I'll get some tea or get some coffee. I'll wake up, have a shower, and then just out the door. I don't have to worry about cooking breakfast, eating breakfast, cleaning up, uh, because that would take 25, 30 minutes before I get out the door. And I'd rather sleep that time. Skipping dinner, on the other hand, is more difficult because it's the time of the day that we tend to be the hungriest. It also tends to be the largest meal of the day, and it's also the most social meal and the hardest to fit into a daily schedule. But if you're able to skip dinner, and it's not too hard for you, because it is the largest meal, it's going to be the most effective in terms of weight loss. You get the eight hours of fasting, and when you wake up the next day, because of those counter-regulatory hormones, you're going to be no hungrier than if you ate dinner. So skipping breakfast is the easiest, skipping dinner is the most effective. But there's no reason that you couldn't change things up. So sometimes you do one and sometimes you do the other. But you need to look into your own life and see where it makes the most sense. Where it's easy, you can skip throw in skipping breakfast. Where it's difficult and you need, to, you need to lose some weight, maybe you have a high school reunion coming up or you have something important, you wanna look your best, well then maybe you wanna to go to fast where you're skipping dinner instead. A quick note about hunger, especially when you're trying to skip dinner, is to remember that the hunger does not continue to build when you skip your dinner. It passes like a wave. If you ignore that hunger, it will simply recede. If you're having trouble with hunger, there are things you can do. And here's my top five tips of how to deal with that hunger. When you're trying to deal with hunger and change habits, it's usually more effective to swap that habit for a less harmful habit rather than stopping cold turkey. In this case, rather than eating, try green tea. The second thing you can try is coffee. Both of those drinks have no calories and are very effective for suppressing your appetite. The third, which sounds a little strange, is to take a little salt in water. The fourth, apple cider vinegar in water. Both of those will also numb the hunger until it passes. And the fifth thing you can try, chia seeds. Chia seeds, you put in water, it blows up, it's sort of like a gel, you eat it, it will fill you up until the hunger passes. So those are five tips if you want to get over those hunger pangs. Taria followed different fasting regimens to lose the weight. Sometimes she used fat fasting, which is where she only ate very high fat foods. Sometimes she did 72 hour fast, and sometimes she did alternate fast through the rest of the month. It was loose and it was subject to change depending on how her life changed. And through that, she also changed her diet into a very low carb, uh, healthy fat uh, diet. Her best advice for those who are just starting is to just take it small. Just do it one day at a time, start with one thing. And if you can do that, 
You can simply build on until you do the next thing. And eventually, it's going to all add up. Great job, Taria. I think you're doing an amazing job. Congratulations. That's it for this week. I hope you learned something. And if you did, share it with your friends. Maybe they'll learn something too and perhaps be able to lose some weight, get healthy again. And if you enjoyed this, if you could do me a favor, go ahead and hit that like button below. I'll see you next week.